Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Someone asked me how to do interactions between two different parts. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. So what I have set up is I have a green ball and a red wall. When this green ball touches the red wall, then this green ball will disappear. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. So let's see if I can kick it into the wall. Whoops. All right, it's moving. So let's see if I get to touch the wall. Almost there. All right, so this is not going very well. So let me see if I can get it to actually touch the wall. You're going the wrong way. Oh, goodness. Whoops, I missed it. All right, so, nope. Nope. Okay, this is take two. Let's see if this goes any better. Nope. Three hours later. Take three, action. Okay, I feel like it's going to happen this time. There we go. Almost there. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just One eternity later. Alright, guys, I think we got it. I think we got it. There we go. So, finally, so what happened is that green ball touched the wall. And those two parts touched, and we set up a script that says when those two parts touch, then we're going to have that green ball disappear. So, sorry for the long intro, but let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you the way that I set this up. And then later on, we'll take a look and see how you guys can customize it to make it your own. So, to do it the way that I just showed you in the intro... What you're going to need is two different parts. One of them, you're going to make this big red wall here. So you're just going to grab a part and resize it to whatever shape you want. I also, over here in the Explorer menu, renamed it to Wall. The second part is going to be a sphere. And you can color this if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, for this one, what we're going to do is add a script to it. So make sure on the Explorer menu, once you add the part, you go ahead and press the plus sign and add a script to it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the script now. Alright, so the way I set this up, the first line is just a reference for that part there. So this is referring to the sphere. Next, we did a function, and let's go ahead and take a look inside the function. So what I did is I used an if statement, and this other part right here is part of this function here. So whenever parts touch each other, they automatically take in like what object is touching it. So what I'm doing here is whatever object is touching that sphere is going to show up here. And then what I'm doing is I'm seeing if its name is equal to wall. If that's true, that means that ball would be bumping into the wall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the sphere. So remember, this part refers to the sphere. So when I say part and destroy, that's going to destroy the sphere. Down at the bottom here is the touch event. So basically what I'm saying is whenever so something touches that sphere, we're going to run this function. And remember this function, all it does is it checks to see what objects it's running into and it checks to see if one of those parts has a name of wall. So if you want to change this around to where the wall gets destroyed instead, that would be pretty easy. All you'd have to do, and you have a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, the way I'm going to do it is to make another variable. So I'm going to say local wall is equal to game.workspace.wall. And then down here, instead of saying part destroy, I'm going to say wall destroy. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so now if we roll this ball into the wall. It destroys the wall instead. And as you guys notice, it didn't take me a thousand times. I did a little bit of practice before I shot this, so it didn't take me a million times like it did in the intro. But basically, if you don't want that to happen, if, and if you want some other properties to be changed, you can use the same basic format. So, for example, if you want to change maybe like the color of the, the ball, you can do part dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new. And let's make it a different color. So let's look at what the possible colors are. Uh, so let's look here under colors. And let's change it to one of the blues, and we'll do really blue. 
So back here under the script, what you can do is just change this to really blue. And then whenever that ball touches the wall, it'll change the ball's color. All right, let's go ahead and run this and we'll take a look. Okay, the ball is going into the wall. And once it touches the wall, it turns blue. So depending on what your situation is, if you don't want to do it for a particular name of an object and rather just like what type of object it is, then you can try something like this. You can say other part and then colon is a and you could do something like that if you want it to be able to change just based on any type of part. Um, the problem with this though, if you're using a base plate as your bottom piece, it kind of recognizes that base plate as a part as well, so it won't work exactly the way you want it to. So this is just an option depending on your situation. This may be helpful and it may not. Okay, so there's a lot you can do with this. I showed you kind of just a simple way to set this up. This is going to be the end of this video. We'll probably do some more about this in the future. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.